hi guys welcome back to the channel if you haven't been on my channel before or you've never seen one of my videos this is a rotation overview so i recently finished my pediatrics rotation i moved back to home this was one of my faraway sites so i actually booked an airbnb and then lived there for six weeks while i completed my rotation i finished my pediatrics rotation this last wednesday and i took my eor we had our oski the next day and then i finished but i kind of want to just go over the things that i really liked about this rotation how things were set up for me what i learned what i was allowed to do and just an overall rating of what it was in my experience so without further ado i'm going to grab my ipad because i've written down a ton of notes and i want to share with you guys what I really thought was great about this rotation for me. Okay, so like I said, I have my iPad here. I want to start out by saying that my pediatrics rotation was an outpatient office. A lot of my friends were placed in pediatric hospitals or just a hospital with a pediatric unit. And where I was placed, it was different because I was outpatient. So initially this is like the doctor that you see if you think something's wrong with your kid and then if this doctor tells you you should go to the er or you should get a different evaluation then you would proceed from there but the office i was in was a primary care specifically for pediatric patients there were a couple doctors within that office and then the one pa who was my preceptor who works there Sometimes I would follow the doctors, sometimes I would follow the PA, but most of the time I was with the PA just because he was my preceptor and this was a smaller office where everyone really knew who everyone else was. As for things that I was allowed to do, I mean, prior to the PA seeing the patients, I was allowed to go in on my own, obviously introduce myself, let them know that I'm a student working with the PA and that you know like i would love to take a look if allowed to most of the parents will allow me to because um there was no harm in foul like i wasn't giving anything to the kid or giving any medicine things like that so parents didn't really have an issue with it um i would do my physical exam and i would come out present to the pa the age what they're presenting with what i think the possible diagnosis could be and then sometimes in the room like if we're giving amoxicillin since it's something that's given so many times to pediatric patients my preceptor would ask me like what dosage would you give based on this weight if you didn't know pediatric medications are given based on weight-based dosing so you have to calculate rather than just give a set amount which um is given for adults and then also procedures wise it was anything that really just came up so i helped with some wart removals i myself didn't like scrape them off but i was the second hand so i would have com balls ready to wipe the blood up i was numbing the patient and just there for moral support because that is a really really scary procedure especially for someone who's so young i was also allowed to give a lot a lot of injections so vaccinations, um, PPDs, things like that. I was always allowed to do that, especially because this is like the one vaccination schedule that I first remembered because it was just so traumatic. Um, when you're four years old, you get four vaccines. So you get your varicella, your MMR, your polio, and your Prevnar. And um, obviously, it's easier for you to give them in the leg, in the thigh for a kid. So my preceptor would have me stand at the end of like the bed and hold the kid's legs in between my legs. I would give two injections in one leg and my preceptor would give two injections in the other. And that was like so different for me because I've never had a patient kind of fight me on giving an injection before, especially since I've dealt with the adult population. You know, they've always just stayed still. I did it in the arm. They didn't really cry or scream or anything. So it was very different this time because I had to really buckle down and make sure that the kid was solid before I poked him because I didn't want to poke them twice or I didn't want to poke myself. Like there's a lot of like mechanical aspect to it that you don't think of, but it's honestly an art and i think once you've mastered that like you will 
be okay with giving vaccinations to anyone if you're okay giving it to kids. Besides injections, I also help my preceptor flush out um, ears like irrigation because a lot of these kids have impacted cerumen in their ears. We would also give ear piercings, which I think is very specific to just this office, but we would have uh, like newborn infants come in after they've had their um, initial Tdap vaccination to get their ears pierced. And I think that was very cool because I always just thought that that was something you went to like Claire's for or like a jewelry store, but you could do it at a doctor's office. And then there was also this one time a kid came in with an abscess on his toe and I was allowed to do an IND, which um, was actually one of the procedures that I still needed for my checklist. So I'm glad that that showed up because I was able to do it. Besides all of those, I was always swabbing kids. So I would do strep swabs. I would do nasal swabs for COVID and flu, RSV. Um, those were the four main swabs that we would do. And then occasionally if someone came in with um, like enlarged lymph nodes, abdominal pain, or exposure to someone who had mono, we would do the mono spot on them. But it, I think it was very rare that we ever did the mono spot. It was more so strep, flu COVID, and RSV. <clears throat> As you can hear from my voice, I am still recovering from the sickness that I got on my pediatrics rotation. Um, a lot of my friends who have also had their peds rotation told me that they got sick and they were down for the count. So if you are heading into your pediatrics clinical, definitely stock up on your oranges, your emergency, your flu medication, whatever you need to just get through this rotation because kids are like the dirtiest things I've ever seen. They literally pick their nose, they slide on the floor, they lick the walls, like everything you could ever think of a kid's mouth is going to be on that. And so obviously that makes them a hundred times more vulnerable to being sick all the time because there's germs everywhere and you're being exposed to them because you're seeing them. So I want to say like 85% of the kids that I saw were there for a sick visit. And then there's your 15% that's there for their annual checkups and their vaccinations and stuff like that. But um, the bottom line is you should make sure that your immune system is up to par for this rotation because if not you will be sick and I was actually really lucky where I made it I want to say like five and a half weeks of not being sick and then my last week there I started feeling a tickle in my throat and then it just went downhill from there because I had a fever um, I had the chills and then my sore throat just continued for three to five days and I literally thought I had strep but then I tested myself for strep it was negative I tested myself for covid it was negative flu and RSV were negative and I was just like what do I have because this is so bad like I've never had this sore throat in my whole life I don't know what this is <clears throat> I never went to the doctor because I just assumed that it was a cold and it would go away which I was right it was a virus but um what was different this time was that instead of it being an upper respiratory infection so I didn't have nasal congestion I didn't have a runny nose or anything like that but the sore throat just turned into a chronic like dry cough and I had post nasal drip where I could feel like there was a lot of mucus um, and it was very thick and like heavy and it wasn't coming out. So I had that cough. I still have it right now. I sometimes like wake up in the middle of the night and coughing fits, but I'm self-diagnosing myself with bronchitis because I literally have no idea what else this could be. And I was so afraid that it would travel even further down. So I had my friends auscultate me and, but yeah, my throat is still not 100%. And as you can tell, I'm still recovering, but we're, we're good, we're getting there. And I just wanna let you guys know, like be prepared to be sick on this rotation. It happens to almost everyone. And I think even one of my faculty members told us this, like she got the sickest when she was on her pediatrics rotation. For my hours, I initially started the days at like 9 a.m. because that's when the PA would come in and then we would end whenever he saw his last patient. So sometimes that could be 5 o'clock, sometimes that could be 7, but usually my um, day would start at 9 and then I would end around 5 to 7 o'clock. So it was a good like 8 to, to 10 hour day every... Um, oh, I was there for four days a week. So 
I had a three-day weekend which was really really nice because then it gave me some time to study on the weekends. Some of my most used tools and resources I would say the CDC like vaccination guideline that's definitely super important because you want to know like when someone's coming in for their annual checkup what they need. I also listened to this podcast to kind of remember the milestones for kids because this is so hard for someone who isn't a parent yet. I think once you've become a parent and you've visualized like your parent, your child growing up and going through the ages and things like that, it makes sense to you like, oh, at one month, they should be doing this. At two months, they should be doing this. But for someone who hasn't mothered a child yet, it was very hard for me to like look at a kid and be like, at this age, they should be able to do this. Or I would be concerned of some developmental disability or something like that so i listened to this podcast i forget what it's called but it's by hippo education and they broke it down into three six nine and twelve months and they do it by like joints so at three months is your um head and you should be able to like lift your head and look around um at six months you should be able to sit up on your own so that's like the hips um you should be able to hold yourself up at a right angle sit on your own without like falling over at nine months is your knees and then that's when you should be able to crawl and at 12 months when you're one years old you should be able to walk so those were like milestones that really solidified in my head after i listened to this podcast because they kind of broke it down into joints for me which was easier to remember but they also go through a different um memorizing technique for other milestones so definitely give that podcast a listen i will link it down below if you're interested honestly the hardest part of this rotation i would say is just dealing with cranky kids obviously they don't like being at the doctor out like they don't feel well they just want to go home get medicine and that's it right but um before they get all of that they need to be seen by someone um and i know that it's very uncomfortable so that was very different for me because I've I've dealt with adults who were kind of nasty and like very pushy, very bossy. They wanted things done faster. I understood that. Um, and I would be able to use my words to reason with them. But with a kid, it was very different, especially since like I knew they were going to get their shot like that. I can't take the pain away, but I can tell you that it won't hurt forever. But they don't really understand that. Um, or if they're just irritated, like they won't let me look in their ears because it hurts and it bothers them. Like I can't reason with them that in order for me to give medications or in order for the PA to give medications, we have to look in your ear. I think I've gotten better at it and especially at looking at the tympanic membrane. I've gotten very good at that because I've done it for every single patient that I've seen. I kind of want to show you guys some things that really helped me and um the first thing is this card like ring that i've made so you can buy these cards but i just printed them out stuck them on some cardstock and made my own cards and then i put this little ring around them but it tells you like the 421 rule for dehydration it tells you common po drug doses normal pediatric values because their heart rate and their pulse and things like that are different from adults i always had them in my pocket but i never looked at them which i probably should have like thinking back but i think um if you're one of those types of people that like to reference things in your pocket like definitely have that with you and then the second thing that was very helpful at least for me um i think in getting the kids to like me um aside from my charm obviously is on my stethoscope i had this little charm when i wear it around my neck you can see it like dangling here so i think a lot of kids when they saw this they were kind of distracted and that would allow me to ask their parents questions about what they're in for and things like that and then also when i'm examining the kid they're not as afraid because you know like they can see this and they can see that it's a cartoon that i'm not someone to be afraid of and that was very helpful for me, so I would definitely recommend getting something like that if you're starting your pediatric rotation. Um, I know on Amazon they have a ton of different options, like they have um, Captain America, they have 
Nemo, I think, a Stitch. They have different ones, so. Things to brush up on. Initially, I would say milestones, definitely. Vaccinations is something that you'll kind of learn after seeing a while, but you try to know your tanner staging, and then also you want to brush up on reflexes in infants. So there's the Moro ref reflex, there is the Babinski, um, the um, the one where you like press in the middle of their foot and then their toes curl in. That's the most satisfying one for me because it always works and I just, I love it. Um, it's the cutest thing ever as well. So if you ever get a chance, definitely do that one. But yeah, so overall, I would say that my rotation for pediatrics was a five out of five. I learned a lot and and for my EOR, I actually scored higher than all my other scores before. And I can't say if that's just because um, like slowly I'm getting better at taking the exam or if that's just because this field is something that I really liked and enjoyed. So it's hard to say, but I will soon be making a video about how I study for my EORs, so keep an eye out for that if you're interested. But yeah, this is my fourth rotation. It's honestly crazy to me that I'm halfway done because I I feel like didactic year just started. It's honestly insane. But I'm halfway through clinical year and we're almost there and it's going by so fast. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and I will see you in my next video. Bye.